Hi, my name is Stephen Sindoni. Welcome to another edition of He Walked the Americas. The stories in this series are from a book written by L. Taylor Hansen. Our story today is entitled The Western Seaboard. The prophet moved from South America up the Mississippi and by rivers throughout the United States. From Michigan, he proceeded to Canada. From Canada, he journeyed to the Pacific Coast. And here is where our story begins. In Michigan, according to Dakota, is the ancient center of the giant cross of waters. To the south goes the Mississippi. To the north, the river to the Pole Star Ocean. To the east, the waters to the sunrise. And farther west, those to the sunset. Along this trail, toward the sunset, trod the master's golden sandals. No tribe was too remote for his sacred visits, none too poor for his ministrations, none too warlike for his counsels. If he heard of a war, he went there, called the chieftains into conclave, divided up the territory, gave them seeds, and taught them gardening. Do not kill unless you are hungry, and then ask the animal's forgiveness and explain your great need for him before ever you pull the bowstring. This was a rule that never a red man would be so rash as to violate, so before the hunting each tribe holds a prayer dance of olden ritual. Always he called the feather serpent, Emeshkotl, or Isikotl, among the Algonquins. Always he wore the long white toga, embroidered with black crosses along the bottom, and walked through the dust with golden sandals. Whenever the people made him new garments, he left with them the old ones, which they treasured beyond all wampum, saying that to touch them was healing. During each of his visits, he trained twelve disciples and one to be their leader, who would accede to his title after he had gone about my father's business. After his visit, the grieving tribesmen carved a hand with the T-cross upon the walls of canyons so that none would forget him, and they would show to their children's children the eternal emblem of his coming. To the Chinooks the prophet came. Once, when leaning on his long staff, he pointed to the plain below them. Down through the cycles of the dawn star I see below us spread a city which shall be named Tacoma. It is a city of the white man. What are you saying, Master? Your name is Tacoma, meaning Lord Miracle Worker. The great white mountain where sleeps the fire god bears your name, Tacoma, not the plain below us. Yea, but the mountain bears another name, and few of the men who live in the city and use the name Tacoma will understand the olden meaning. The hot springs of Tokobaya mark the passage of the healer, while in the canyons of nearby Koso, where so lightly sleeps the fire god, there is a canyon of ancient recording, and in this long and silent gallery is the hand with the T-cross, and near it the great cross, olden symbol of the master. To the land of the Havasu, the healer came one early dawn, climbing down a steep trail into the great dividing canyon. With the sunrise sun behind him, they saw he of the white robe coming. The flame of the dawn touched his golden sandals, and long before they saw him raise one arm in greeting, meaning peace and prosperity to you, they whispered to one another, He comes to us, the great Tokobaya, the mighty master miracle worker. Then, with the whole tribe watching, they saw him stop and tap a large rock in the midst of the desert dryness with his long staff, and behold, there gushed forth water. He stooped and drank from the sacred water, which is still called the spring of Tokobaya. To the Pueblos, Tlaacoma came, who then were the outpost cities of the great empire of Tula, capital city of the Toltecs. Their lands were peaceful, their plantations extensive. In those days, they did not need to hide our messes to keep away from wicked raiders, for long was the lance of the Toltec armies to protect their outposts. To the Wallape tribe came great Tacopa, who gathered the chiefs in giant conclave and redistributed the grain fields. Then he taught them more clever gardening, gave them melons, pumpkins, and mescal, squashes, and beans. He showed them how to conserve water in hidden underground reservoirs. Many other plants he gave them, which had been lost throughout the ages. To the people of the White Rock he came. He told them that he had come here after the great war in the Southland, where all their cities were left burning, and they themselves but a splinter of a once mighty power. Sad in their hearts and ever homesick, they remembered their disaster. They say that he told them of another nation which had to flee oppression 
in days long banished. Then he showed them the beauty of their new land and how to make their gardens prosper. When he was ready to leave the Pueblos, again he called the chiefs to council. When he told them he was going, they were desolate with sadness. Heavy our hearts and dark our future on that day when you will leave us, for there are tribes westward known to men as the sacrificers. Some day they will overwhelm us. Then unto these serpent people will I go, and I will teach them. Yea, but will never more we see you? In truth, I give to you a promise. Keep up my precepts, forsake all warfare, and you shall ever have my blessings, even beyond white man's coming, and woe to the hands that are raised against you. But will you come back to us, great master? Yea, if to my teachings you are faithful, and to show that you have lived each day rightly, Leave a light at night burning against the time I will return through the dawn light and lead thee unto my father's kingdom. So every night a light is burning in a coma and other pueblos among these tribes which we call heathen. Did Jesus walk in the Americas? According to the Chinooks, the Dakota, the Algonquins, and the Wallapai, they all say he did. I'd like to thank everyone for watching The Western Seaboard.